welcome. Welcome, everybody. Uh, all of you that already own AccuGraph 5, I appreciate that. I'm glad you're here with us. I also know that there are a lot of you here that don't have AccuGraph 5 yet, and maybe you're here to check it out, which is a smart move. This is the best way to find out about it. So thank you, one and all. Thanks for being here. Uh, I'm going to put up a little poll here just to uh, find out how many of you own AccuGraph and how many of you are still thinking about it. So just one second while that pops up here. And uh, let's go ahead and when you see that poll over there in your um, over on the side, go ahead and answer that. Let us know. Uh, meanwhile, I want to talk just for a minute about history that, that brought us up to this point. Um, we released AccuGraph 5 on September 10th. That was 20 days ago. And when we did so, we actually took two huge risks at once. On the one hand, it's always a risk when you completely redo a very successful product from the ground up and try to make it better. Um, I'm old enough to remember New Coke, if anybody remembers that debacle, and sometimes you don't want to mess with what's already good. And so we took a big risk adding a lot of innovative new features to AccuGraph 5. And the other big risk we took was a whole new model for how you purchase and use AccuGraph 5, going to a subscription model rather than the buy it and own it model that we've used in the past. So uh, I'll admit, you know, we were a little on edge. We were a little nervous about how things would go, but I'm pleased to report it's been very, very good. The response has been tremendous. Uh, thank you all for that, and we're excited about where AccuGraph 5 is going. So um, since that, since we released, we've got, we've had actually in, in the last 20 days, we've had 10 new releases of AccuGraph 5. These are updates, bug fixes, stability improvements, feature enhancements. That's, on average, an update every two days. Now, we're not going to keep up that pace. Uh, but, uh, you know, any new software, you're always going to have some immediate updates that come out to make it better. And I wanted to point that out, that that's part of the benefit of being a subscriber. As those updates come out, they're yours right away. And uh, that shows our commitment to continue making AccuGraph better for you, more useful, more powerful. Um, also, I'm pleased to report that uh, among the, the subscription benefits, we have the folks that uh, are part of our AccuGraph user group, which is already going. It's got great uh, content up there, great answers to questions. And um, I've been really impressed already at the activity that's going on there. So if you're not part of the Facebook AccuGraph user group and you already own AccuGraph 5, make sure you jump in there, get in that group, join the conversation. Uh, next, the practitioner's directory, which is one of the pro tools that's available to professional level subscribers and above. That is coming along nicely. It's being updated. Currently it has AccuGraph 4 users in it. We're in the process of building that out for AccuGraph 5. That'll be along shortly. The education portal for enterprise users that have the all-access education pass is built. It's done. We've been testing it. I, I love how it's turned out. We're going to be going live with that and rolling that out on Monday. So those of you that are enterprise subscribers, I want you to know that come Monday you'll have access to all of our educational products and, and free CEUs and some excellent, excellent tools there for you. Uh, those that may be interested that perhaps have a lower subscription, you can always upgrade your subscription to the next level by simply paying the difference. In fact, you can always downgrade, too. You're never locked into the subscription level you're at. Okay, um, and then today's webinar, this is one of your, uh, your AccuGraph professional level benefits, uh, these training webinars. We're going to do these once a month, and every month we'll have a different topic. Uh, some months we'll do clinical things. Some months we'll do marketing things. Some months we'll talk about some, some practical things for running a practice. Uh, all of these are designed to help you be more effective and better in your practice, and we're going to bring in some real experts to present sometimes. We're very excited about what we have in the works. So hopefully you'll be joining us every month for one of these webinars. And so uh, that brings us to today. Uh, let's get started. A um, couple of things just I wanted to, to tell you. First of all, this webinar may be a little long today. There are so many features. I'm going to try to move quickly. I'm going to try to keep it interesting, but we've got a lot of ground to cover. And I want to have time for Q&A at the end as well. So. Uh, forgive me if I move along pretty rapidly, but I don't want this to go two or three hours. I'm trying to really respect your time and make this very content rich and useful. It is being recorded, so if you need to go back and watch something again, you'll have that opportunity later on. 
All right, and then um, the other thing I wanted to let you know, as with uh, as always, the things we discuss in our webinars, um, these are these are advice and these are good tips. But ultimately, as you know, the responsibility to treat the patient is with you, the practitioner, and. I'm never going to take the place of your knowledge, your experience, and your one-to-one -one contact with the practitioner. And AccuGraph's never going to take the place of that either. So just wanted to, to give that reminder that still, this is about you. And with that in, in uh, place, um, let's get going. Let's, uh, let's hit the walkthrough. We're going to focus on the software today. And then if we have clinical questions and uh, how-to questions, things like that for treatment, we're going to save that for another day but we will be covering a lot of that in future webinars. So I'm going to switch over here to my other screen and let's start taking a look at AccuGraph 5. Okay, and that should be up now. Hopefully you can all see that. And uh, I'm, by the way, I'm looking at the poll results here. It looks like uh, straight up two-thirds of you have AccuGraph 5 and a third are still looking at it. So. That's really great. I'm glad those of you that uh, have it are here to learn more about using it and all the benefits. Those that don't have it, I'm glad you're here to find out what you could be enjoying. So here we are. I'm going to jump over here into the home screen in AccuGraph. And I'm going to uh, jump out of the patient I was in. When you launch AccuGraph, you land here in this home screen. And this is what you'll see at first. And I want to start down here, actually, at the bottom of the home screen. Let's take a look at what we call the stats down here. This is a new exciting feature in AccuGraph 5. This updates in, in real time, and you can see that it gives me some quick practice stats at a glance. It tells me that in my little practice database here that I'm using, I have two acute care patients for recovery, wellness, inactive, and reactivated. Let's talk about what each of these means. Acute patients are patients with five or more visits within the last 60 days. So these are patients that are not just coming in now and then for maintenance, but they're actually working on something. We're trying to get them better. Recovery patients, three or four visits within the last 60 days. Still actively treating a problem, but maybe not quite as frequently. These are patients that are really high on my radar, folks that I'm actively treating and seeing often. Next, we have wellness patients. This is the bread and butter of the practice. These are the folks that have had at least one visit in each of the last three months. So these are the folks that are reliably coming in at least once a month, maybe getting a tune-up, wellness care. These are patients that are excellent for your practice. You want more of these wellness patients. Then we have inactive. These are patients that have been active but haven't been in in 45 days. This is where you can focus marketing efforts. This is really important because they are still recent patients. They still kind of have that uh, recent connection with you, they're most likely to come in again if you just reach out to them. These are the folks you want to follow up with and to convert these inactive patients right back into active. Hopefully get them on wellness. And then reactivated patients, these are the ones that were inactive but they've come back in the last 30 days. These would be good folks to make sure you give some special extra attention to, help them understand the benefits of regular care. So the stats screen, this is all new. And, uh, oh, you can put in here the number of days. So this, these are my stats in the last 30 days in my, in my little practice database. Three new patients, nine patients seen, 14 exams, and so on. Snapshot, day-to-day, -day, how's my practice doing? This information is gold if you're serious about having a successful practice and helping as many people as you can. Right now, you can just click, see how I'm doing, see where to focus on, and get it done. And getting it done is what the tasks and reminders area of the home screen is all about. So in tasks and reminders, I can see I have birthdays coming up. I have 10 birthdays coming up this month for my patients. Jane Goodall and Wonder Woman and Peter Pan and all these folks ought to get a birthday card from me or perhaps maybe even uh, come in for your free birthday treatment or evaluation. Great little tool there. Folks here that I need to follow up with. These are people that I've tagged in their patient file that I need to follow up. For example, maybe it's somebody that I saw for an acute problem yesterday and I want to make sure I give them a phone call today to see how they're doing. So I tag them as needing follow-up and they show up in my to-do list and then as I follow up with them in whatever way is appropriate, I check them off the list and they will go away. Latest AccuGraph news. 
this is where you find out updates about AccuGraph. One of the issues that we found is that people change their email addresses. I know, I know, who would have thought? And so when people do that, sometimes they don't get our emails, they don't find out there's a new update available, they don't find out there's a new training available. So we put just a little, you know, a non-obtrusive way that we can announce things right here in the software. So when you get into AccuGraph in your home screen, check in, you can see what's new and what's going on, and there's always a link here that'll lead you to more information. So here's that free webinar that we're in today, and that's where we'll announce the other things that are coming up, so watch that. Okay, at the end of the day, if you have any patients that you haven't taken notes on, then those will appear here in the exams without notes, reminding you before you finish your practice day that you might need to add notes to these. Similarly, if you have not printed or emailed the report for a patient, it's just going to put a little reminder up here, hey, these people didn't get their report in case you wanted to make sure to get it to them. So it's just kind of a way to help make sure that you've crossed all the T's, dotted the I's, kept everyone happy. And then you have a custom task list. This is where you can add your own tasks simply by clicking on the plus, type in a task, and uh, I'll just say I want to show off AccuGraph 5. And that's my task for today because preparing for a great webinar is already done. I'm prepared. So there we go. This is your then tasks and reminders screen. Just a quick way to make sure that you're on top of everything you want to be on top of. And now the third part of the home screen here is the patients section. In here I can search for patients, add a new patient, or show my complete list of patients just by clicking. And then I hide and show at will to make sure that I'm HIPAA compliant and don't have anything showing that doesn't need to be. Even when I'm not showing, I can still securely search for a patient without revealing other patients' names. So in this case, today I'm going to pull up a patient by the name of Frodo Baggins. So as I'm searching here, I type in Frodo, it says one patient found and brings him up right here. And so now that my current patient selected shows Frodo Baggins, I'm ready to interact with that patient's file. So with that, we're going to move out of the home screen now. And when I say home screen, I'm pointing to the icon in the upper left here. I'm going to move out of the home screen, and we're going to go ahead and jump into this patient's overview. All of the patient-related items, when you've selected a patient, they all appear over here on the top right. The overview, the patient file, doing an exam on that patient, and the patient's last graph, all with quick icons to get to. And in the middle here, it always tells me which patient I have selected. If I need to get out of that patient's file and deselect, I just click on the X here. And now there's no patient selected again, and I'm back to my search mode. I can clear that with the X too. So, oops, so we'll bring up Frodo again. And let's go into Frodo's patient overview. What we see here then is I've got this great little overview screen. This is like the introduction screen for this patient's records. So uh, here he is, Frodo Baggins. I've got a phone number. I've got a email address. I've got his birth date. Um, edit patient information. I can just jump in and edit all of that information right here very easily. Go back into his overview. And then I have chief complaints. But first, I wanted to show you this little feature that we've got. You'll see here that I can, uh, I can drop a picture there for this patient. And so let me go ahead and pull out his picture. We'll just put him, yeah, right there. Uh, no, that's, that's not a good picture. Hold on, we'll, we'll scratch that. I don't like that image. Let's get a better picture of Frodo. There it is, okay. Good, we'll just center that there. Now I've got his picture in my patient file. You can snap pictures on your iPhone or with your iPad or whatever, and any kind of an image you can just drag and drop right in there, a JPEG, a PNG, whatever you'd like. Now, next to this, we have a little flag here, and this is a cool new feature that we've added. I'm going to click on this flag. This is for red flags about a patient. Let me show you what we do with that. I'm just going to say, uh, here's a warning. Let's say um, patient is diabetic also disappears when he puts on the ring 
Okay, those are some important things I might want to know. Every time I see the patient, I should probably keep in mind if there are specific medical conditions, prescriptions that the patient is on, problems I need to always be aware of. And so it turned that little flag red. I've got a red flag, something to remind me that there's something unique about this patient. And it's free form. I can put anything in there, and it gives me my little uh, patient warnings and reminders. Okay, down here in the bottom, you can see I've got the PI score history for Mr. Baggins. And uh, he hasn't done really well. Um, all of that trekking through Middle Earth and being attacked by orcs and you know, bit by spiders and everything has probably taken its toll. And so we'd like to see him do better. But we have seen in the most recent visits, we've seen a, a good improvement trend. Great way to get a snapshot of how the patient's been doing. Top right, we have his last graph. And then bottom right, we have a scrolling list of all his records. This is his whole patient file that I can scroll through very quickly. And I'm probably scrolling a little fast for the broadcast. So this gives me a quick way to access all of his records. With that in mind, now that we've seen the overview, let's go ahead and jump into the patient file and talk a little bit more about what's going on. Here in the patient file, we can do a lot of new things that are all new for AccuGraph 5. Um, one of the biggest things, one of the most outstanding new features is the ability to do robust patient notes. And I'm actually going to put up a different poll now. I'm curious uh, how many of you are doing notes electronically versus doing other types of notes. And I, I, I want to find out what you're using for notes. And so let me just put up this poll right here. And let's go ahead and, uh, and see what everybody's doing for notes. Meanwhile, let's talk about how you can do notes in AccuGraph 5. Uh, first of all, you can type notes here, and you can use a, a, a pre-formatted template like SOAP notes or admission notes. I could just simply click Add to Note, and there I've got my SOAP note format. Or if I don't want to do that, if I just want to freeform type, I'll put here, um, patient is frequently attacked by orcs. That's important to put in the notes. And something that's really great now that you can do with your notes is you can do all kinds of uh, freeform formatting. So for example, I wanted that orcs to be bold and red and I don't know, maybe underlined. Orcs are dangerous. And so you can do all that in the notes. Type whatever you want. It's freeform. You can put numbered lists. You can put bullet lists. Uh, it's all very powerful. And then you hit save and you see over here it immediately put a new note over here. And if I want to go back to that note, I can always go back and re-edit it simply by clicking on it. It'll pull back up here and I can add to it. And I can even scroll in the back, uh, back in the history and find other notes and do the same thing. So that's how notes are handled. The next item here is chief complaints. In the chief complaint list, this is really cool because it helps you track every chief complaint that you're working on for this patient. And so in this case, let's say I'm going to track his uh, neck rash. He's got a rash on his neck. Um, onset, let's say it's uh, two weeks. And um, it was uh, caused there. It's in the neck area. Um, oh, sorry, duration should have been two weeks. Look at that. Luckily, the program smarter than me and set me straight. The onset was from carrying the ring on a chain around his neck and so on. I could type characteristics, what aggravates it, alleviates it, and so on, what treatments have been done, any notes, and then I can set the severity. And we're going to say that rash, that's about a nine. That's pretty bad. So we're going to save that. And now you see in my chief complaint list, he's got a rash on his neck. And in the notes, it automatically added the chief complaint. As fast as I typed it, it's already in my notes. It's done. If I go back to the overview in the chief complaint area, the rash on the neck now shows in the overview. So very quick and slick way to keep track of what's going on. And I can add another chief complaint. I can have as many as I want just by clicking Add New. And when they're resolved, I just check here, this complaint has been resolved. Another new area in the notes feature is this, pictures. And this is another really cool option because 
you can actually take photographs of whatever you need to take a photograph of on the patient. So for example, uh, I just documented this chief complaint about a rash. So let's just snap a picture of that and we'll put that up there and I'll say um, check out the neck. You can see the chafing there, that's bad stuff. Now I've got it documented and as soon as I hit save, that was added to my scrolling patient notes. So that's immediately in there. Again, you can put a picture of anything. You can track progress that way by taking a series of photographs. That's how the picture notes fe feature works. There's also what we have called what we call the location feature. And this is really cool because all you have to do is click on any location and you can document what's going on on, the, on that location on the patient's body. So for example, we're going to click right there and right there. That's where he had that rash and then I think right there was where he got stabbed by a sword and if I'm not mistaken, he's missing a finger. So then you can come down here and uh, you can say one and two and that's rash on neck. Three, we have a stab wound. and that was cured by the elven magic. And for number four, missing finger. So there we go. We've got all the notes about what was going on in those areas. And as soon as I hit save, that's now become a part of my notes. And any of these, of course, I can always go back to just with a click to make modifications. So that's, that's the new notes section. When I decide I need to print my notes, I can click on the print button and it will, or the print tab, and here you can see everything that's in this patient's notes file. And so, for example, I could say, yeah, I want to print that, uh, that location picture, I want that chief complaint, this note, and uh, I also want to print this exam right there. And so it built my print in real time, everything that will be printed. And then if I hit print, there we go. So you can custom print all of your notes or any part of your notes. You have a selection here for how many days worth of notes you want to look at. So you've really got a very robust and powerful new electronic notes application here as part of AccuGraph 5. Now let's look in on that poll that you've been taking. Let's see how many of you currently handle patient notes with 14% in AccuGraph 5, 31% using another electronic system, 53% still taking paper notes, <laughs> and I love the 3%, the honest souls who said notes. You mean I'm supposed to take notes when I treat a patient? All right, so there we go. That's a little overview about what's going on in the patient file. And so to summarize patient file, all of your interactions with the patient are here. And I want you to notice something we still haven't taken a graph. I didn't have to graph this patient in order to interact with the patient file, to take notes, locations, chief complaint, pictures. All of that can be done and never even do a graph. That's really great because you may not be graphing every patient every time. And that's a, that's a nice update from former versions of AccuGraph that required a note to be attached to a graph. Now everything is independent and it all just goes by date. Okay, and so uh, with that in, uh, in mind, since we haven't done a graph yet, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and hit new exam, and I'll need to invite Frodo in here so that we can go ahead and do a graph on Frodo. I'll turn up the volume here so we can hear it talk. And I'm going to switch over to my uh, camera so you can see us doing this graph for just a minute. First, I'm going to change to a source point. Left, beginning left. exam. Left, lung nine. That's a little loud. There we go. Okay. And now that we're ready to do the graph, I will switch over here. And let's go to my other camera. Just one second. There we go. Welcome, Frodo. Frodo. The part of Frodo that. today will be played. <laughs> yeah, the part of Frodo will be played by Kimberly Thompson. All right. Yeah. How's that neck rash doing? Really well. Getting Thanks. better? Yeah. Have you given up that ring habit yet? Yeah. Good. That was never any really good for you. 
Excellent. All right, go ahead and hold on to that for me. Rest your hands in this position. Just making sure the camera can see us. And um, all right. Left, pericardium seven. Left, heart seven. Left, small intestine four. Left, triple energizer four. Left, large intestine four. Right, lung nine. Okay, now I'm going to pause the camera here and take it back to the screen. I want you to be able to see what's going on on the screen while we do the rest of this graph. But you've seen the, the technique, how we're sitting here. It's very easy to do. And you just hold the wand on there, hold the probe on for three seconds. It's automatically timed, and it takes care of it for you. So let me switch over here. And then get the screen going on. All right. There we go. Okay, and now we're on the right hand. Right, pericardium seven. Right, heart seven. Right, small intestine four. Right, triple energizer four. Right, large intestine four. Left, spleen three. Now, while we're doing her feet, one thing you'll, a couple of things you'll note that are new, you'll, you'll see over on the right side of the graphs window, or the exam window, you'll see that there's this little bar graph, or line graph that's built in real time to show you your plateaus, to see how your reading is, whether it's stable, whether it's climbing, whether it's steady. You'll also see there's this little timer, this uh, pie chart that counts down to show you how long each measurement needs to take place. And of course, that's regulated by the computer, so everything is always the same. You always get the same amount of time. And so here we are on the left foot. We'll do these. Left, number three. Left, kidney three. Left, bladder 64. Left, gallbladder 40. Left, stomach 42. Right, spleen three. Right, number three. Right, kidney three. So Frodo, it looks like you've lost some weight. A little bit. Right, bladder 64. That's really great. But you're feeling good. Okay, right, feeling gallbladder good. 40. That's fabulous. Right, stomach 42. Please remeasure the following points. Right, lung nine. Okay, so it's going to tell me to remeasure some points where they're suspect because there's a large split and it could have been a measurement error. Left, small intestine four. Exam complete. Okay, and there we go. Thank you, Frodo. You're welcome. Appreciate that. All right. I'm going to go back to my cane. <laughs> yeah, okay. Back to your <laughs> hobbit hole. That's right. All right, so here we have the exam now. And as you can see, as soon as you finish the exam, it gives you any points that need to be remeasured, and then you immediately have the graph, the results. On the left side, you have the results from the hands. On the right, you have the results from the feet. And then they're all color-coded. Red is excessive, these three here. Blue is deficient, heart, liver, stomach. 
and green is normal. If there were any splits, they would show up as purple. A split is a left-right imbalance where you have uh, the readings very different between the left and the right. Fortunately, none of those showed up, so there we have it. And as soon as you have this graph, you have actionable information. I can immediately see, for example, small intestine, triple warmer, and large intestine all showing excessive when compared to the rest of the meridians. And interestingly, those are all three uh, yang meridians of the hand. And so they have something in common, and it's going to give me some treatment options. We'll get to those. But let's look at the graph in some other ways now. I can look at yin versus yang, and I can see yin averages 64 with some deficiencies in here. Yang averages 87 and a lot of excess there. Comparatively speaking, then, yin is deficient when compared to the yang, and so useful information there. I can show by element. This puts the meridians into their element pairs. So, for example, over here in metal, I have lung and large intestine and so on going through the pairs, and I can immediately see that in emperor fire, heart and small intestine, look at the disparity between the two of them. That's an issue that I probably ought to file away as I'm putting together my treatment plan. I can look at that same five elements information on the five elements chart. And so going around the chart, fire, earth, metal, water, and wood, I have the average for each one of those elements. Fire is averaging 82, earth 70, and so on around the circle. Uh, look at wood over here. Average of 57. That's the lowest element on there. And then we look at metal, 85, that's the highest. And so we have metal that controls wood, and it very well may be exerting too much influence over controlling wood. We also break up the fire element into uh, emperor fire and minister fire so that we have those averages broken out here on the side. So this is useful because it tells me that there's an issue between wood and metal, for example, and that that needs to perhaps be addressed. If we look at the energy cycle graph, this gives us the energy cycle starting at 3 a.m. and going right through the day, you can kind of see what happens during the day. This can be really useful when you have a patient who has a time of day problem. Uh, every day they have you know, a headache at 3 o'clock or they have uh, some kind of a problem that's associated with the same time every day. This is a great way to help them understand what their meridians are doing at that time and how they're involved. Or you can put that same information on the typical traditional horary chart that we're all used to. So starting here at midnight and going on around the circle throughout the day, it shows what's going on. And so for example, 1 to 3 a.m. liver time here, we see the deficient during that time and lung time and so on coming around. Midday, 1 to 3, we've got small intestine shows excess. And that might be useful to know because you know, midday, you're probably trying to digest your lunch and you've got a small intestine meridian that's compromised here, that may have consequences. So great way to educate your patient and help them understand why they feel the way they feel and what you're going to do to fix it. While we're on the topic of patient education, this brings us to our PI graph. PI stands for Personal Integrated Energetic, and it has all kinds of uh, statistical analysis behind it. In fact, we actually have a patent on this not just not just a copyright or a trademark for how it looks but we actually have a patent for the process at arriving at this number because it took a, a lot of time effort statistical calculations over a hundred thousand graphs analyzed to come up with how to do this and we're really proud of it it takes all of the balance information uh, what kinds of imbalances they have how severe they have what meridians are involved um, left, right, upper, lower, yin, yang, stability, all of these different measurements. And it puts it all together in a statistical model into a single number. And that number reflects overall balance for the patient. So Frodo today scored a 64 on the pi score. And if I look over on the left here, 64 is kind of a typical score. This is somebody who's not really in bad shape, but not, not doing really great either. It's, you know, you'll see a lot of this. And honestly, this runs the gamut you'll see people come in that score in the 20s and you'll see some folks that score up in the 90s and it, it runs the whole thing but the point is they've got a single number that can answer the age-old question every patient has that question is how am I doing am I getting better they want to know that and so this gives them the answer to that question 
if they get a 64 now, you do some treatment, they come in next time and they score a 74, they immediately know they're doing better. Even if they're not feeling it yet, even if they, uh, the, the, the symptoms haven't improved, they understand and know that things are moving in the right direction. Also, this is really useful for those patients that get better and want to stop care. They say, oh yeah, you know, uh, thanks for that. After two visits, I'm feeling great. I don't need to come in anymore. Well, you know, I look at the graph here and I look at the, the PI score and you're only in the typical range. We haven't finished our work. We want to make sure that we get things as balanced as we can so you have the best chance for things to stay better, not just get better. I'm not an aspirin. I want to make changes in your life. So great for patient education. The PI score is the tool you want to be using. This graph here, this is called the ratios graph. This gives upper versus lower balance. So that would be the, the meridians in the arms versus the meridians in the feet. And then you also have left-right balance. And you can see that Frodo today was 19% upper dominant. That means when I measured, the, the meridians in the hands were 19% higher in the readings than the ones in the feet. That shows that perhaps the chi is not flowing up and down the body as well as we would like. That doesn't necessarily rise to the level of a belt block, but it certainly gives us something to think about. Left-right imbalance, well, that's really well balanced, 1% right. And this little plus sign will move around the crosshairs graph, and we want it to be as centered as possible. On the left, we can see the overall chi level, which is in the green zone, and that's fine. We don't really have to push that. Yin versus yang, we see that we're tending toward yang, yin deficient, yang dominant. And then over here on, on the left, we have what's called the stability score. The stability score refers to how stable the readings in the graph are. If I go back to the baseline graph, I can look and see, do we have really high highs and really low lows, like a roller coaster where it's going up and down? Well, we have a little bit. It goes down and back up, and then it drops kind of precipitously there for liver and then back up. So it's, it's not as stable as it could be, but still it's fairly stable. I've seen some graphs where you know you have readings of 200 and you have readings of 20 in massive uh, valleys and, and mountains there. She doesn't have that. So stability score is in the reasonably good range. All of these different scores, upper versus lower, left versus right, stability, yin-yang, all of this gives you ways to look at the patient's chi and find out what's wrong and how to improve it. And as it improves, it gives you a lot of different parameters to look at for improvement. For example, you know, you may have somebody who still has some, some highs and lows and some excesses and deficiencies, but on the next visit, let's say that the stability score is improved. That means that the highs are not as high and the lows are not as low as they were. The severity is decreasing. And so you, uh, you have a whole new way of looking at the good that you're doing. All right, and then getting away from the graphic graphs, you can also show the results in printed information. Now the printed information here, the meridian analysis information that we call it, this gives written information about each of the imbalances that were found in the graph. It talks about what each meridian controls, what it does, tells the patient what the state is, so in this case heart meridian is deficient, may be associated with the following symptoms, anxiety, emotional disorders, palpitations, and so on, going on down through the list, the following emotions, and then it goes on through the other imbalances found on the graph. This is an excellent tool for patient education. If you print this and send it home with them and ask them to just look through, circle whatever symptoms they currently have or have had, say in the last two weeks, they'll bring it back to you and you'll find out all kinds of things that they forgot to tell you on, in, on intake. It's just an outstanding tool for that. Plus, in their mind, it helps them make the connection between what's going on in their meridians and what's going on in their body for symptoms. Once they make that connection, that helps them elevate acupuncture to where it should be as a, as a first line of defense to help them get better before they start going into other more uh, dangerous or more invasive approaches. So those are the graph types. All of them lined up over here on the left. All of them give you information and they all come from just that single two-minute exam that you do. Once we've looked at all the graphs, we need to talk about what we're going to do, how we're going to treat this patient. And I've got some great surprises for you in that because AccuGraph 5 has some, some excellent new treatment tools. 
So meanwhile, uh, I see that folks are typing questions over and, and getting some answers over there. Thank you, Kimberly, for jumping in and taking care of, uh, of people's answers. And we will try to get to as many Q&As at the end as we can as well. Uh, and of course, you're always welcome to send questions to us by email or uh, on the AccuGraph users forum on Facebook. We're really excited about what's going on there. So keep those questions coming. And now let's talk about how to treat. So we see that we've got some imbalances here. Well, first, we've got some points recommended. If I look along here down at the bottom, you can see that there are some points and they're lined up under various meridians. So for the heart being deficient, for example, the suggested point that it's telling me to treat is heart 9. Oops, that popped up on my other monitor. And so when I click on heart 9, I get this pop-up window that shows me the illustration of the point right there and location, attributes, actions, indications, needling, energy movement that that point is associated with. It's all right here. So I can get complete information about that point in real time. And I can go through each one of these uh, and do the same. Similarly, I can get information about each meridian. So for example, if I click here on small intestine, I immediately have a picture of the small intestine meridian. This is great for patient education if you want to localize pain to a specific channel. Oh golly, that, sh that posterior shoulder pain you're having. Well look, it comes the, the small intestine meridian comes right through here and it's excessive and so you've got excess there which can have inflammation associated with it. You can also look at musculotendino areas associated with that channel. So you've got the main channel, you've got the musculotendino areas, very useful. You even got the internal pathways of each channel. So small intestine meridian, for example, you can see where it runs externally, and then you can see that it comes up around the neck, dives in deep, picks up conception vessel 13, 12, down through the intestine, and eventually ends up down at stomach 39 very useful for considering treatment and for patient education. So you get all of that just by clicking on a meridian. You can also decide to treat a meridian differently. This was a big request that we had because some people would, for example, look at a split and the split was also excessive. You would have both readings very high but also split. And so some people would say, oh, I don't want to treat that as a split. I want to treat it as excessive, for example. Well, now you can do that. I can take pericardium here and I can say that measured as normal but there was kind of a difference there I want to treat that as a split so I put that in as a split and now pericardium is showing as purple and it has shown me a recommended treatment point for pericardium because I'm now viewing it as a split so you have complete control over what you're going to do with each meridian and how you're going to address each meridian all right, now when you've got your recommended points down here, you can look at recommendations from a variety of different ways. So right now, you can see this square in the lower left. That's our basic treatment protocol. That's the one that's selected. If I select our five elements treatment protocol, then my treatment recommendation changes. I still have these points here for individual meridians, but you'll see that for these three meridians, I now have gallbladder 13 recommended for all three of them. Well, that's interesting because gallbladder 13 is the meeting point with yang linking vessel and it's the muscle meridian meeting point of the three arm yang. Well, these are the three arm yang, aren't they? So I said, you know what? Instead of treating each of those separately, you can actually treat all three of them just by treating gallbladder 13. That's going to decrease the number of needles that I have to use, decrease the number of points, and still give me an outstanding and maybe an even better treatment for that patient. Well, let's suppose then, okay, I've got, uh, I've got points and I like this and uh, I can go ahead and I can click over here on the yellow button and say, okay, I'm satisfied with these points. I like what they're doing. Oh, except for liver eight. Let's suppose I, uh, excuse me, except for liver eight. Let's suppose I don't want to treat just with, uh, with liver eight there. Let's suppose that I want to instead use the, uh, the source point. I'm going to use liver three. So I pick that one instead and now I can add the points to today's treatment plan when I click that yellow button everything down here got added to the treatment plan and liver 3 that I manually selected for liver was already there because I added it manually and if I don't want liver 8 I just click that and I can build my treatment plan on the fly so I've got my treatment here 
and I can choose left and right sides. I can choose which points I recommend for home care. And I can even manually add points to this treatment plan as I go. So if I click add point, I can go in here and I can just manually look up a point. Say I want the uh, Jingwell point for bladder. Uh, well, there it is. It's bladder 67. I could click to add it to, a treat to the treatment plan just like that. So you can manually add points or this is kind of cool and this is new. You can do it by protocol. So I'm going to click condition here and we'll just go in and we'll, we'll pick a condition. Let's say um, we, were, we were playing with shoulder pain before. So I go here to shoulder pain and it says uh, weakness, pain, or stiffness of the shoulder. I've got some primary points here. I've got some secondary points and then I've got points for the type of pain. Well, let's suppose that uh, this is specifically tendon pain. So I want gallbladder 34 in there and um, I also want to add triple energizer 14 and 19. As I click these, they're added in real time to my treatment plan. And so I can intelligently, interactively build my treatment plan on the fly as I go. And when I go back here, oops, when I go back here to the patient's graph, you can see that the things I've added to the treatment plan have been added in real time. All right, when I'm satisfied with my treatment plan, I can choose which points I want the patient to do at home. We'll just say I want to do them all. And there we go, treatment plan's built. I didn't show these other treatments down here, but I'll just really touch, I'll touch on them briefly. We've got the expert treatment, which looks at not only today's graph, but it looks at prior graphs, and it looks for trends, and it makes some recommendations based on trends. I've got auricular points, and so I could say, oh golly, I need to uh, include point zero. Yeah, let's add that to the treatment. I like that. And we'll do the auricular version of liver eight. We'll add that to the treatment. There we go. There are back shoe points. If I just wanted to treat the back shoe points of the patient, for example, you'll see that each one of these, all on the bladder channel, all of them are back shoe points. I can add those to the protocol or I can uh, just pick one or two of them, whatever I want to do. And then we have a, a highly um, advanced protocol called Divergent Channels Protocol here. And this one treats upper, lower, left, right, front, and back. So it's a three-dimensional balancing. And uh, we'll do a training on the future in that, but I just wanted to point out that, that that one's there as well. So you've got different treatment approaches for how you're building your treatment plan. And let's suppose now... I go back, I look through my treatment plan, I decide, oh golly, you know, I've, I've got a little redundancy in here, I've got some extra points I didn't want. You just click on an X and there you go. Treatment plan is done, just like that, built on the fly. And the point that I want to make is just this. In AccuGraph 4, what was recommended is what you got. In AccuGraph 5, you have complete control to do whatever you want. Once I hit the Begin Treatment button, you can see that it takes me into the patient file again, where we were before, and it has put this treatment plan in the, in the patient file, and you can see that I can go right through, point by point, the treatment plan. And if I want to go through and treat, whether I'm doing needle or laser or electric stim or whatever I'm using to treat, I can track what I'm doing as I go through here. And that treatment plan also ends up in the patient's records for the day. So it's all included, it's all excellent. That treatment plan that we just built right here, it's added to the records and that will be part of the part of the patient's permanent file. So now I know exactly what I did. With just a few clicks I built it and it's all documented. Okay, with that then, we've got a few other areas that we haven't covered yet. Area number one, I want to point out that this is all being networked. What I mean by that is if I have a computer in treatment room A and I have a computer in treatment room B plus I have a front desk computer on the AccuGraph professional subscription I can have three computers all sharing the same data in real time. So I could graph Mr. Baggins here in say an intake room and then he goes into a treatment room for treatment and the AccuGraph system in there already has the information ready to go. So even if I've already put together the treatment plan at another terminal, it doesn't matter. It's all right there. 
that is all mobile compatible and so coming soon we're going to have that available on uh, iOS for iPads. It's already available on Windows tablets so if you have a tablet that you carry around from room to room you can have AccuGraph running on that tablet if it's a Windows tablet right now. We're very excited about that because more and more practitioners are going electronic. It's very common to see an iPad in the treatment room now. In fact, it's almost expected. If, when people go interact with a healthcare professional, they almost expect that the professional is going to be doing some sort of electronic record keeping or documentation. So this keeps you up with the times, keeps you on the cutting edge. We are just all excited about that. Now, we've talked about points and how to treat with points, but we haven't talked about all the other ways to treat. So we'll take a quick jaunt through some of these other areas. Now that we've got our, our treatment plan set up for points, let's talk about herbs. You can see here that based on today's graph, there are some herbs recommended and there's a score. The higher the score, the more appropriate that herbal formula may be for the patient today. So in this case, this particular formula is perhaps the most important and uh, it's due to that, it, it says it's prescribing it due to the fact that the large intestine was uh, excessive. So I can look at that, I can look at the therapeutic actions, indications, contraindications, and so on, and I can decide whether this is a formula that I want to use for the patient today. And if it is, let's say, yeah, I'm going to prescribe two bottles of that. Guess what just got added to my patient file notes? If I go back to patient file, here it is. It just prescribed that formula for today, including all of the information that the patient needs, instructions for how to take it. It's all right there. So that's how the herbs section works and it's it's nice because you've got this picture of the graph, this mini picture of the graph, so you can look at the graph in real time as you're considering which formula might be the most appropriate to use. Next, foods. <laughs> this, this is all new. This is totally cool and we've been getting a ton of really positive feedback about what we've done with the food section. In AccuGraph 4, the food section, it had some recommendations, but it was, it was pretty minimal, it was not very robust, and we knew we could do a better job. And so hats off to Kimberly Thompson, who spent months, literally, working on this and putting it together. So now, let's suppose I take a look at my graph, and based on TCM diagnostics, uh, based on an eight principles or a Zong Fu diagnostic, let's say I look at liver here, because I decide, yeah, liver's, uh, you know, it's really low, there's really an issue there, and um, we'll, we'll call it, uh, uh, we'll, we'll say it's liver chi deficiency. Based on that, and I would, I, would re I would come to that conclusion based on my other exam techniques for, uh, you know, pulse, tongue, whatever it is that I've done to determine that, I pick the pattern. Once I pick the pattern, it gives me the TCM dietary recommendations. So there's some general recommendations up here, there's the pattern that's being addressed, it's liver deficiency showing right here, and then it breaks it down by type of food. Grains, medicinal herbs, seasonings, oils, meats, beans, and so on. It actually built a shopping list. This is done in real time, this is something you can hand to your patient when they walk out of your office and say, look, head over to the grocery store, here are items. I want you to pick things off this list and this is what you're going to eat for the next week. It also gives symptoms, helps them understand the pattern just a little bit more. And so that's how food is handled now. And it's very robust. For example, then, if I had um, two patterns, well, let's say I had liver and then I go to large intestine and I say, yeah, large intestine is dealing with excess and it's got heat. Well, now you see that my shopping list just updated in real time. I've got all of the uh, foods on here for liver chi deficiency and for the large intestine heat all unified into a single shopping list. So very powerful. We're really excited about that. Food is therapy and patients really love to get involved in this. People that like acupuncture generally tend to like this sort of approach where they can in a natural way using foods treat themselves and feel like they're they're doing something good for their body because they just need a little direction from you and here it is. All right, custom treatments. Custom treatments are based on what you pre-program. So to pre-program your custom treatments, 
you go in here to the reference section which I just clicked in the upper left I go to the custom treatment area and you have categories so I just put a couple of categories in here I have a category called exercises for example you can add a new category called herbs or called essential oils or healing gems or whatever category of treatment you want to add pick a category and then you can add recommendations I'm gonna add a new recommendation here we're going to we're going to call it um, burpees we'll put those under exercises and we're gonna say that that goes under the exercise category we're gonna say yeah when the uh, when the large intestine is high do burpees now this is me playing guys please don't prescribe burpees to your patient for large intestine excess I think you know that and then I can say um, this is a hard exercise instructions here I won't type them all out but whether you're doing exercises or herbs or oils or whatever it is you type a description here again you can you can do whatever you want to make the description as robust as you want you can use colors you can do whatever and when you've got that custom recommendation saved you hit saved and now it now it appears over here and when you go back to your graph recommendations like that will be made and so in this case it looked at my graph it says oh golly there's an excess of large intestine well there's an exercise recommendation already in your database do you want to prescribe that and if you click there then it's going to show up so if you have taken a few minutes to program this and you've put in I don't know say herbs and and exercise and essential oils whatever categories you have you may have several recommendations down here and you can pick and choose what goes into the treatment plan and the home care plan for the patient so it's really valuable because it gives you the opportunity to be completely flexible in how you recommend things and it will do it based on the graph I've had people over the years that have called and said hey can you program in the herbs from this company or that company or uh, I like to use uh, sound can you program these frequencies and tell it to recommend them or I like to use light or whatever it is and the answer is sure you can program that you can make this do whatever you want it's amazingly flexible and to review how that's done I just wanted to point out you pick the conditions that trigger it and those conditions can be more can be complex for example I have a little fake exercise here that's triggered by a low spleen but I can say you know what triggered by a low spleen but only when the stomach is excessive so I put those two on there and it will only trigger when both of those conditions are met so you can make that as complex or as basic as you want alright so back to the treatments then we did points we did herbs we did food we did custom let's talk about spinal this will show you a real-time spinal chart based on the findings of the graph today so in this case we see and, and the areas that are more red are more likely having some sort of an issue so we see here that at the CT junction particularly around T2 that's a likely suspect for today T8 T12 and perhaps sacrum those are the areas that are that are potentially involved and so if you're doing twina or if you're doing some sort of body work or maybe you work in conjunction with a chiropractor maybe you are a chiropractor and you are doing spinal care this gives you some areas that you may want to look at more closely it won't diagnose the spine of course but it does help the patient understand how physical and musculoskeletal things can be involved with what's going on in the meridians so along with the spinal segments you also get the associated muscles that are involved with these segments so it's really quite complete so for example and, and the way that it all comes together for example uh, let's take a look here we have T2 excuse me L2 L3 and L4 all associated with the large intestine and we'll just you know I'm picking out of the hat here let's suppose that the patient is having some some problems in the quads and hamstrings having some leg issues and you say well golly you know you've got this this large intestine excess that's associated with these particular muscles it's associated with the spine you can put all that together and create a more complete picture of the patient and when you have patients that are you know athletes for example they want to know this stuff they care they have trainers that'll help them with this stuff so that's the spinal home care 
the home care tab is built on the fly. Look at this. You can see that all of my recommendations are already put in here. The herb that I chose is already here. This is something for the patient to do at home. The dietary recommendations that I chose are already here. The custom treatment that I picked is already here. And then I can type up some instructions. And it says there are no specific home care instructions, but I can say, yes, there are. Stop messing with that magic ring. Frodo, that ring was never any good to you. Throw it in the fire. All right, so I've got my recommendations here. I click Save. That's all saved. I've got my home care points here. And so in my home care recommendations then, all of this is what the patient's going to take home with them. The herbs, the diet, the custom treatment, any instructions I give, and the home care points. That's really a complete prescription. I mean, this is probably more, I dare say, more than most of you were sending home with your patients. Not all of you, but patient is really going to feel good walking out of there saying, wow, this is complete. They're addressing everything from a, from a variety of different approaches. Compare that with what somebody gets when they walk into the MD. Here's your prescription. Go fill it. Okay, doc, I mean, do you suppose I should, you know, eat better, do some... No, just go get the prescription. <laughs> I think, uh, I think you're going to look really good to your patients with this. Okay, when you've got all of that put together, and by the way, every bit of this is optional. You don't have to do herbs. You don't have to do food or custom or any of this, but it's all here available if you want it. And again, part of the key of AccuGraph 5, part of what we really strove to do was make it ultimately flexible because so many people practice in so many different ways. Whatever it is you practice, whatever your style of practice is, there's something here to make it better. All right, when we hit summary, this summary tab kind of gives us a summary of everything that we've got today, and it talks about the reports. Now you'll notice that I've got the print button down here. I want to show you a trick. Those of you that already have AccuGraph, here's the trick. You ready? If I'm in AccuGraph right here, and I hit the print button, guess where it takes me? Summary, because the summary page is the print page. This is where you summarize your findings and generate a report. Now, there are some pre-made available reports. So there's one called Daily Notes, and here's what's included, baseline graph, notes, food, and so on. There's a first visit report that's a little more complete, and you can scroll through and look at each report right here on the right. So if you're wondering, hey, what's this going to look like to my patient? What are they going to see? Well, look right here. This is what they're going to see. There's a follow-up report that's pre-made, or you can customize a report. When you customize a report, then you can actually go through, create a report type. So let's suppose you go out and do screenings and because you're going to attract new patients and build your practice, which AccuCraft is awesome at. In one of our upcoming webinars, we're going to teach more about how to do that the right way. But let's suppose you go out and do screenings and you want a baseline graph, a pie score, the meridian analysis, and some home care points. So you check the ones you want and now you've made a custom report and you can pull that up anytime under custom, hit that, hit print, you're ready to go. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every time because you can save as many types of custom reports in here as you want and you can change them on the fly in real time. You can say, you know, I don't want the home care points on there. Okay, now print it. Boom, ready to go. Your custom cover page, this is a page that you create. Maybe it has your picture and some details about your practice and maybe your hours and um, a referral card. All of that you can put on a custom cover page that goes on every report you print. And that's a really cool thing to do because it makes the report yours. Instead of just handing them, here's your report, courtesy of AccuGraph. Now it's, here's your report from my practice with my picture on it. It's about me. That's your calling card. And it's a powerful calling card, I'll add. Patient Jingwell chart, if you're going to have them treat the Jingwell points at home, it'll hit print out a handy-dandy Jingwell chart, uh, and it will include it in the, in the print. And so there we go. Now that you've chosen what you want to print, you can either save this report as a PDF, because maybe you're going to attach it to another uh, documentation program, for example, that you already use. You want to summarize what you did today, attach it in your electronic records, there you go. Or you can email it, quick and easy, click and it's ready to go. Put in their email address or if it's already in their file it'll pull it and you can add a little note here 
where you can choose what you want it to say as the introduction to their file or thank you for coming in or whatever or you can actually choose to print it on paper so the summary page this is where you make up your reports and where you print email or PDF your reports it's all right there ready to go and it couldn't be simpler click click boom done alright hey we are almost done and we we didn't quite do it in an hour but we're getting close I have a couple of other things to show you I'm excited about that and then we're going to uh, do some Q&A for a few minutes but I've got one more poll that I would like to show just got want to ask you guys a question because I'm curious we're almost through with AccuGraph 5 I've been jumping up and down and showing you stuff and you know even even this walkthrough isn't enough to really thoroughly cover every detail and we've we've created some training videos to cover all of those but uh, I want to know what you guys think so I'm gonna put up a little poll here and uh, give me your input give me your impressions so far how is AccuGraph 5 while you're doing that I want to show you just a couple of other things first let's take a look here while we're in a graph I want to show you how to compare graphs so if we go here we've got a listing of all the graphs for this patient and I can just pick the ones I want and hit compare and now I have a scrolling window with those graphs that I chose and I can make them any kind I want I can make them into pi score graphs and I can compare and I can show hey you went from 40 to 55 to 62 look at that you're doing better as fast as I can click it changes the graph type and it's flexible I can pick any graph or graphs out of the patient's history and I can choose as many as I want excellent way to track progress and see how things are progressing for the patient I can also if I want to go back to a single graph I'm looking and say oh yeah you know what this is that one I was looking for that one that had three splits I click and there I am in that graph ready to discuss it with the patient other things that you can do in the graphs window this is a new feature this is kinda cool because I don't know about you but when you look at this window there's a lot going on here and that's one of the challenges of designing software when there's a lot of information that you have to pack onto the screen you have to be really careful about how you use real estate and sometimes you just can't make things as big as you would like we had a lot of practitioners say you know with all the stuff with all the the buttons and the controls around the graph is just a little small and I'm my eyes are maybe not as young as they used to be and I'm having a hard time seeing it so we put in the zoom graph feature you click the zoom graph feature like that and immediately everything goes away except the graph this is cool for patient education if you want to discuss a graph with the patient and you want to make it big and visible and get rid of the distractions one click there you go it's a little thing it's a minor feature but you know what it's huge it makes a big difference people love it all right the history whoops that popped on my other monitor there we go the history button shows you their history of the pi score history of meridians and you can choose how many graphs you want in that history so let's suppose I go through the last six graphs it shows it right here I just use the slider down there to adjust I can see what the pi scores have been doing I can see what the five elements have been doing and I can see that in the last six graphs this patient has had a deficient kidney six times six times in six graphs what does that tell us folks we've got a pattern going on here we need to be paying more attention to that kidney because after six treatments I've not managed to get that kidney to come out of its deficient state what more do I need to be doing so this history is a great way for you to improve your treatment history can be printed by the way just print right here but it's a great way to improve your treatment and it's a great way to demonstrate progress to the patient and then it, when you're looking through the graphs you just click older and newer and you can go right through the history in real time and I note by the way that that's a lot faster in AccuGraph 5 than it used to be in AccuGraph 4 almost everything in AccuGraph 5 has been improved uh, sped up optimized made better and then there's all the new features that have been added alright well to finish up then there's just a couple of quick things I wanted to note number one when we look at this information screen I don't think I mentioned this yet but this is something that you can actually go in and modify if you go under settings and click reports under edit meridian analysis information you can choose 
what the information is going to say. So if I say when long is excessive, I have this in here, but I want to add some things. I can just type some new text and add it, or I can make that a different color, and I can underline it. And you can do anything you want to the Meridian Analysis information. Customize it and make it yours. Um, and then it will save that, and that's what will be included in those Meridian Analysis reports every time you print them. That's really a nice, robust, new feature. And then here in reference, we have the points which I kind of went through briefly before as fast as you can click so choose a meridian choose a category and it gives you the point right away choose another meridian choose another category it gives you the point right away and you've got all of the information with the point in charts we've got various types of charts and they're all interactive and clickable so when I go to a chart let's suppose I'm um, looking at the windows of the sky points and uh, oh yeah here it is large intestine 18 I click on that and I've got large intestine 18 right there immediately I've got all the information I want about that point it's all designed to be super organized and readily accessible so that you've got all the information you need at the click of a mouse I've got a few auricular charts in here same thing conditions there are over 350 conditions in here now with ready-made prescriptions to give you a starting point for how you're going to treat so you can use the graph as a basic treatment as a root and then you can use the symptoms as a branch so when you've got root versus branch and you treat both at once you've got a better treatment than you would otherwise have and we had a lot of people requesting a lot of new conditions and so we really really beefed up the number of conditions that are in here and we've also beefed up how robust those are in terms of the types of points that they recommend and the optional secondary points that are recommended and so on we're really proud of that we put in a search feature so you can also just search so as fast as you can type it narrows down the list just like that custom treatments we talked about in the herbs section one thing that we did that's new is we beefed up the herbal interactions so now when I hit view interactions I can look up all of the pharmaceuticals that this herbal formula might have a negative interaction with and I can do it by category of pharmaceutical this is totally new so suppose I have a patient that's on anticoagulants well it says yeah this formula may interact with anticoagulants uh, let's see which ones it uh, it increases anticoagulant effect that's not good uh, so if they're on warfarin or dicumarol see it drills right down to the drug names then I probably don't want to prescribe this formula to that patient and this is all built in there and it's all really uh, it, it's the way we've organized it it's completely new very convenient click click ready to go so those are just some of the the few new things I could keep going but you know I think I need to stop and start answering some questions and uh, we'll get going with the Q&A now because we've been on this webinar for uh, for over an hour so thank you everybody for letting me walk you through that I feel like I've been going a mile a minute I tried to be efficient with your time I hope that you found it helpful and frankly if the poll results are any indication I'm reading the poll right here it says uh, 74 percent said awesome <laughs> I love it thank you very much 25 percent said pretty good let me know what we can do to impress you we want it to be awesome two percent of you said meh all right well can't win them all I suppose <laughs> I'm going to jump back over here to the camera. We're going to end that poll. And we will start taking a look at some of the questions that have been asked. So let me change my camera here. There we go. Okay, that's better. Hi, everybody. I'm back. It's me. Thanks for that. Uh, thanks for sticking with me and walking through all that. I'm just if you'll bear with me I'm gonna take a quick look through some of the questions and boy they are coming in fast Paula says has spell checker been added to the text area when sending an email uh, you know I don't think it has yet Paula but I am not sure on that I'm going to uh, I'm gonna ask my technical staff to let me know on that if that has been um, but I, I don't think it has yet but I think that's a good idea trouble is that we use a lot of medical terms when we're when we're typing notes and so spell check is a mixed blessing because sometimes it'll change your medical terms anyway enough there 
we'll let you know if that has been added. Mercer says, uh, does diet recommendation when picking two diets based on patterns will program eliminate conflicting foods? Yes, it deduplicates them. Uh, and so your shopping list is, uh, is smart. Anna said, love the medications interactions as well on the supplements. Cool. I love it too. Thanks. Um, <laughs> Sharon says, maybe we could sub Ren Shen for steroids. It's like AccuGraph 4 on Ren Shen. <laughs> awesome. Bill, thank you. It was uh, helpful and well organized. Oh, I appreciate that. Christina says, the 2% don't know what they're getting. <laughs> love you guys. That's awesome. Um, Cameron says, Polly, yes, spell checking is there, but it's, it's based on your operating system. So if your OS does spell checking when you type fields, then it will be spell checking in there. Thanks, Cameron. I appreciate that. Some other folks said, can you show the link for the AccuGraph group once more? Um, yeah, actually, if you just go over to AccuGraph, or um, if you go over to Facebook, the link that you're looking for is, it's on Facebook, and it's a group called AccuGraph Users Group. And so uh, you can actually just search that on Facebook and request to be added. It is for AccuGraph 5 owners only. It's not, uh, we cover AccuGraph 5 topics there. If you're still on AccuGraph 4, unfortunately, the group is, uh, is not for you. Um, AccuGraph 4, of course, we're still offering support. You can still call us. We're not trying to turn anybody away. But this is a special benefit that people are paying for in AccuGraph 5. Oh, thanks for putting that link up there. Appreciate that. Um, Annabelle, last update, I lost the analysis information of meridians in Spanish. How can I get them back? AccuGraph 5 is not in Spanish. It's currently English only. Uh, there's been some talk about whether we would add the Spanish back into it. We're not sure yet. Honestly, it really depends on the market for that. But we've focused all of our efforts on the update and on giving, delivering the best product that we can. Once we're satisfied there, then we can talk about other languages. Spanish is not the only one we've had requested. Uh, can't make any promises there yet. Not sure where that's going. But hopefully that'll, uh, that'll, that, that'll be a possibility in the future. Eris says, when printing a chart image for patient intake home, or for patient take home, is there a way to print without the full photo image of body, i.e., is there a graphic body diagram to print? I'd have to know what you mean by chart image. Um, if you're printing treatment points, for example, for them to, to self-treat at home, then you can choose whether to print the points or not. Um, I'm not sure which full graphic body diagram you're referring to unless you're referring to locations where you pick spots on the body. So if you could clarify that a bit. Um, Kimberly put up the Facebook. Thank you. Esther says you're beating him to the answers. Uh, Kelly, do you work on the new system for Mac? Yes, yes, fully Mac compatible. And um, Kimball, if you could verify this, or Cameron, if you could verify this, but yeah, the new El Capitan OS that came out, or that I believe it came out yesterday for Mac, uh, yes, fully compatible. Lynn, do you have a piece for the probe for a more pointed probe tip for points that are in a tight area? Or are there many points close, to, close together, like vol points on the fingers? We don't. We've talked about that. Right now we're sticking with the moistened Q-tip. The pointed tips, unfortunately, have a lot of accuracy issues. We've done a lot of testing. We have a full research lab here. We look into things like this, and we haven't found a pointed tip that we're satisfied with, particularly because you can't use water as effectively. And therefore, the, the whole skin interface becomes compromised, and, uh, and you end up with some accuracy issues. So maybe that's something we can do in the future. Is there a way for those not having update to see a, to see a what? Sorry, Destin, it looks like I got cut off. Maybe that question uh, can be asked again. Gal says Spanish, yes, please. Duly noted. We'll see what we can do. Destin, AG5 users input on computers and best for AG5. Second half of the question, is there a way for those not having update to see a AG5 user's input on computers and best for AccuGraph 5. Um, not quite sure I'm understanding what you're asking, Destin. Could you please clarify? Sorry about that. Scott asked. Oh, and Cameron answered. Um, oh, no, Scott, oh, Scott put that in. Okay. Uh, I add additional points to the treatment plan. Can I do this other than scrolling through the meridian? 
to find the point and add it, more of a search function. Right now, the quickest way to add, and I'll, I'll jump back to the screen here and, uh, and show you that. I'm going to screen share here for a second. Okay, so the quickest way to add to a treatment plan, I just go here to the last graph, and if I want to add, I click on Add Point, and it's rather than actually scrolling through, it's just click and click. Now, if it's a long meridian, yeah, there will be a little bit of scrolling right here, just in the meridian list. But there is not a search where you could actually type in the point. The problem what we run into with a search, honestly, is that people tend to abbreviate all the meridians differently. Uh, you know, is, is liver LR, or is it LV, or is it L? Is it LR space and a number, or is it just LR with the number right after it? That search tends to get really complex, and so to make it comfortable enough for everybody to search has been a bit of a challenge. That's why right now we did just the click-click interface where you can click and click to add a point. By the way, once you've added a point, there's an X right here. You can remove it from the treatment plan just that quickly as well. All right, I will jump back to the camera here. We'll answer a few more questions. Uh, how to manage devices used on AccuGraph 5. Okay, so you have different devices, and there's actually uh, an opportunity in, the, um, in AccuGraph itself to manage your subscription and to manage your devices. And so you can do that um, within AccuGraph, and you can choose which devices and which users. AccuGraph is now multi-user friendly, uh, meaning that each user can have their own login. And so you can have different users in the same office, for example. Um, you can authorize and deauthorize devices. So let's suppose you have a subscription that allows you to have it on three computers, and then you buy a fourth computer and you want to take it off one. You can go right in AccuGraph, pick that computer, hit deauthorize. That removes it from your AccuGraph subscription. You add the new computer, and you're ready to go. So it's very, very simple and easy to manage multiple devices in there. All right, um, let's see. We got some thanks. I appreciate the thanks, guys. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Possible to purchase a longer cable from the computer to the AccuGraph module? Well, sure. That's just a USB cable. You can buy those anywhere. Go on Amazon and get one. You can get them 20 feet long if you want. I don't recommend going over 10 feet. Um, but yeah, a, a USB cable, they come in various lengths. The one that comes with your AccuGraph system is 3 feet. If you want a longer one, that's no big deal. They're cheap. Uh, will the iPad edition be only for accessing information or will it be able to do an exam? Can't do an exam because an iPad doesn't have a USB port, so you can't plug the probe into it. Um, perhaps in the future there will be a solution for that, but right now it would only be for accessing. You would have to actually do an exam on something else that has a USB port. But as soon as the exam is done, you could treat and carry your iPad with you and have all the information to uh, interact with the patient after that. Um, more thanks. Appreciate that. Is it possible to see the discussion regarding which, com <laughs> which computer to... Oh, here we go. Is there a way to learn more about which OS is best for AccuGraph 5? Early was stated as form on Facebook. Which OS is best? Well, if you ask me, it's going to be Mac, uh, simply because you have fewer problems, fewer viruses, easier to install, updates are better. I, I could go on and on. Macs are easier. However, if you're going to do Windows, then Windows 7, 8, or 10, all of them run AccuGraph equally well. Uh, there's not a quote-unquote better OS. Now, in terms of a computer to buy, you don't have to spend a fortune. You don't need a hot rod computer. Uh, your basic laptop, for example, that you can pick up down at Best Buy uh, or even Walmart that for two or three hundred bucks, it, it's not a it's not a real souped up computer, but it'll run AccuGraph just fine. Uh, it's not AccuGraph is not highly resource intensive, where you have to have a supercomputer to run it. Uh, and tablet wise, same thing. Um, as long as you pick up a tablet that runs a full version of Windows. Not Windows RT, not a, not a limited tablet, but full Windows 8 or full Windows 10, then that tablet will run AccuGraph. And if that tablet happens to have a USB port on it, then you could actually do exams on it. I happen to have a little tablet here. Sorry about that. I have a little tablet right here that, whoops, that runs, there we go, that runs uh, Windows 8. 
and it has a full USB port. It's a mini USB port, but I have a little adapter I can plug in, and I can actually plug an AccuGraph into my tablet, and I can do an exam with that. So it is possible to find tablets for that, but it gets a little wonky trying to plug into it. So hopefully those are a few pointers about what computer to buy. If you have more questions, hit us up on the, on the users group, and we're, we'll be glad to get you some answers. Uh, Michelle asked, can you go back to a previous treatment date and add a note? You can't add a note under a false date, meaning if I type the note today, it's going to tag the note today. That's a legal thing. When you're keeping medical records, backdating is a big no-no. You get caught backdating, that can cost you your license. Um, so the bottom line is, if I forgot to take a note yesterday, and I take it today, the world's going to know I took it today. Okay, that's not the end of the world. It's not a big sin. But uh, if you do get caught going back and backdating notes in the, in the future, and you ended up in a, in a court proceeding or something, that's not good. So that's why AccuGraph always puts the date in that you actually do something. It just it keeps you out of legal trouble. All right, um, let's see. Hi from Bolivia. Hi, awesome. We got someone from Bolivia with us. That's cool. Bill asked, I noticed AccuGraph uses CVGV nomenclature. I switched to Ren and Do years ago, thinking it was more accepted. Uh, what we use is the World Health Organization generally accepted abbreviations that are the worldwide standardized nomenclature. And so that CV and GV are the are the standardized two because all of the all of the World Health Organization standard nomenclature uses two letter abbreviations. Everything is a two letter abbreviation. Hence CV and GV. Uh, for a while, we tried to wade into the battle about who was right about how you should call them, and we had to standardize somewhere. So there you go. Uh, David says, are there any options to pay for an update that isn't a contract base, cloud subscription? Update the program that is housed on computer and office as AccuGraph 4 is right now. Unfortunately, no, there's not. Um, we had to go to a subscription model because, frankly, it's better for you, it's better for us, and it provides an opportunity for us to, to give you the kind of support that we want to, um, to give you the training, the like webinars like this, for example. Uh, we have you know 500 people signed up for this webinar. That's not cheap or free. That costs us money to put on, and subscriber base is what allows us to do that sort of thing. So we have not been been able to come up with a business model for a single purchase that would allow us to support you for years and years, providing all of the things that we provide and do it all for free. It's just not possible. Um, but we've tried to make the subscriptions as affordable as possible. And I want to point out that right now, if you go to AccuGraph or AccuGraph.com, if you already own AccuGraph and you hit the upgrade section, we have a great special running right now. You put in your serial number off your probe, or off the back of your, your AccuGraph black box, off of that, and you punch that in, it will look you up and, and it'll give you a tremendous discount. And so we're really doing everything we can to make it as affordable as we can because the key is the more subscribers, the more affordable it is for everybody and the better support we can give everybody. So we, we priced it low, counting on volume, folks. Um, all right, is record keeping HIPAA compliant and who certified that it is? Yes, it is HIPAA compliant. Everything, is, it meets all of the requirements we've we've read through, we're familiar with them all. Uh, we have not had an independent firm certify HIPAA compliance, but we certify it ourselves, and particularly having to do with the proper type of encryption, the proper type of um, safety protocols that are built in, the fact that everything is encrypted in your computer, so nothing can go outside your computer without being encrypted first when it goes to the cloud, when it's even shared in your office, between two computers in your office, it's all uh, RSA 256 encrypted, highly secure, um, and it uh, and the other things, you know, not showing any personal health information and so on. It's all built into it. Don asked, are there any patients you wouldn't use AccuGraph for? Yes. Uh, patients with a um, implanted electromedical device, like a pacemaker, AccuGraph is contraindicated because it's an electrical device. And although the chances that it would interfere are are so minuscule as to be non-existent, that doesn't matter because if there were to be a problem, you would be blamed. You would be liable. Therefore, we say anybody who has an implanted device, don't use AccuGraph on them. 
And I know that there were a lot of questions asked previously. Rather than trying to scroll back and pick them out, which would be kind of bumbling and fumbling, I'm, I'm going to ask you, if you don't mind, just retype them so that they come in at the top of the list here, and I will keep answering in a rapid-fire succession here. And we're, I'm going to keep going as long as there's still questions, folks. So keep them coming if you've got them. Um, next question. Uh, Bill asked, is there any significance to some points climbing versus steady in testing? Yes, I notice most climb and then plateau, but occasionally a point does not. Also, see a point climb then drop. What does that mean? If you do EAV stuff, electroacupuncture of Vol, the Reinhard Vol developments, he puts a lot of emphasis on whether things climb, whether they uh, decay, or whether they plateau and stay flat. We currently don't put a lot of clinical emphasis on that, other than to note whether you've got a good stable reading. Now in the future, with more study, with more research, we may be able to actually document and demonstrate more meaning, more clinical meaning for that. But I don't want to start making claims I can't document. That's just how it is. So right now, we've got that in there. That'll give us an opportunity to do more research. Grab some water. Okay. Uh, net, good question, by the way, Bill. Thanks. Suzanne, I have Mac and Windows. Can they be networked with my subscription? Absolutely, yes. Networking doesn't care what OS you have. You could have you know, three different OSs in your office, a Mac and a Windows 8 and a Windows 10, and they will all talk seamlessly. It's a beautiful thing. Christina, how do we include points for our treatment that is not in the list? For example, Master Tongue's points. Right now, you would type them in custom. Um, that's the kind of thing that uh, you have the opportunity to customize um, and uh, or you know you can type them to home care as well if you want or just add them to your notes uh, but non meridian points we currently don't have in AccuGraph uh, perhaps in the future we'll be able to add something like that next um, job error iOS version can edit information on all tabs we assume so. The iOS version isn't complete, so there's a, I can't answer a lot of questions about it yet. We're aiming for full functionality there without having any limitation other than you can't actually do the exam. Hopefully it'll work out that way, but programming for iOS is kind of a different animal than programming for a full computer operating system. All right, next question. Which is better to use, source points or Jingwell? Uh, you know, that's a great clinical question, and we'll talk a lot more about that later. Right now, I'll, uh, in the interest of brevity, I'll give a very brief answer. Source points give you the best and most sensitive picture of the main meridians. Jingwell points are less sensitive, and they tend to reflect the musculotendino channels a little bit more. So, depending on what it is you're trying to demonstrate, you can use either one. My personal preference is source. There's a lot more... Um, considerations that go in there and we actually teach that in our in our training seminars so if you're an enterprise user you'll be able to access that, that training for free starting Monday um, but we'll probably do a future webinar on that and go into a lot more detail all right um, what about diabetes pumps generally those are external to the body those are not implanted medical devices so shouldn't be an issue there uh, because you're not putting electricity through that diabetes pump it's not electrically connected to the body if something is electrically connected to the body, that's where you have an issue. All right, um, how do we get a recording? Uh, we're going to send out a link. Don't worry about that. And let's see, other questions coming in. Wow, I'm getting behind. How to get AccuGraph to download the iPad if my iPad has a mini USB port? Um, I promise your iPad doesn't have a mini USB port, but you might mean tablet. Uh, and if it's a tablet that has a mini USB port and it's running Windows, you install it like you would anywhere, any other version or, of AccuGraph, or excuse me, any other computer, and that is you go to AccuGraph.com slash start. And that's where AccuGraph 5 is located. You'll be able to download it from there and install it on your, on your tablet like you would on any other computer. All right. Um, many thanks, Adrian. Hi. I appreciate you guys thanking me. That's nice. I worked hard to put this together, and it's really gratifying. You all are the best. Is there a way to add my own protocols to the reference section? Uh, not yet. Hopefully soon. Suzanne, how do I know I've taken a good reading? Does consistent pressure matter? What if I get the point slightly off? Good question, Suzanne. 
Again, I'm only going to answer briefly because this is a half hour discussion and we go into this in our training, but pressure does matter. You want to learn to standardize pressure and you can learn with a little bit of practice. It's not hard. Yes, location matters and if you're slightly off, the reading will be low. You'll notice when I did my demo graph here earlier and measured Kimberly slash Frodo, it told me to go back and remeasure two points. And the reason was they were much lower than their partner point on the other side. And so AccuGraph said, you know, I suspect you might have missed on the one side. You might have been a little off because that was a low reading. And sure enough, when I went back and remeasured, I got on the point and the reading was higher. So that's what happens if you have uh, if you've missed the point. Um, and again, there's a lot more about that in our training. Uh, let's see, Cameron says, uh, your mic is on the fritz. Any way to reset that? Is that still a problem? Hmm, just a second here. Sorry, folks. Let me see what I can do about my mic. All right, if we go like that, it's a different mic, and you probably can't hear me as well. And now if I go here and switch back. Okay. Is that working any better? <clears throat> All right. Hopefully that took care of that. Uh, Mark asked, AccuGraph 4 voice was better. Can I switch back? Oh, geez. I'm sorry, Mark. Uh, no, not any way to switch back. Uh, we actually <laughs> did a fair bit of work on the voice, and uh, I thought it was a real improvement. Uh, clearer, uh, more concise, a um, little more modern. That AccuGraph 4 voice has been around a long, long time, and it was kind of computery. Uh, the new voice is a little more human. Um, Mercer, possible to program and map custom Meridian exams, such as 8 Extraordinary. Unfortunately, no, the exams are fixed. We've had people request that over the years. They've said, oh, you know, I have this cool set of points that I came up with that I measure, and they're all on the face. Uh, Unfortunately, we don't have a way to customize that and then graph that and then make recommendations off that. And all the things that AccuGraph does, it's all a big domino effect. And uh, there's just no way to, to do that. And then as soon as we customize it for one person, someone will want one point different. And it gets to be a bit of a can of worms. We haven't tackled that yet. Who knows? Maybe something that we ta tackle in the future. Lenny asked, how do I mark the point as being done with laser instead of needles or STEM Plus Pro? Type it in your notes. Um, Valerie said, I thought the ground had to be in the opposite hand of the hand being measured. Or did she switch hands when I wasn't looking? Valerie, that's a great question. Uh, I can't recall if she switched hands, but the short answer is no. It doesn't matter what hand she's the, the patient holds the ground bar in when you're measuring. You actually can take an adequate, reliable measurement in the same hand. So I've got the ground bar in my hand here, and I'm measuring here, and that is just as valid as having the ground bar in the opposite hand of the hand I'm measuring. Um, we did some studies on that. We actually compared and measured and found that the thing that matters is the point. The ground bar, I keep bumping the mic, sorry guys. The ground bar, much less important where it's located as long as the ground bar makes a good connection. So. Yes, it's permissible. You don't have to switch hands. Uh, but if you want to switch hands, by all means, go ahead. It won't make a difference. All right. Um, Mary said, what do you tell the patient if their PI score goes up and down? Great question. Topic for another training. Here is the very brief answer. If the PI score goes up, awesome. If the PI score goes down, aren't you glad we checked? Because... Clearly, we need to adjust what we're doing in your treatment. It's a good thing we're keeping up. We're being vigilant. We're watching this stuff. Isn't that a better... Uh, it's like if you go to, the, go to the medical doctor and they do your lab and they say, oh, golly, you know, your cholesterol number is worse than last time. Well, it's a good thing you checked. You know, something to do about it rather than, you know, being ignorant of it. So never let that be a negative thing. Never let it be a negative thing that you are being vigilant and that you are doing a good job tracking your patient's care. Always it's positive, even if it goes down. Um, Jing, how is this vision, how is the vision sensitivity stability? I did some repeat tests each time come up different. If I'm understanding right, uh, what you're saying, Jing, is that you measured and then you measured again and then you measured again and you kept getting different results. Answer, yes. You absolutely will get different results. Again, very brief answer. We go into this in our training, but 
when you put electricity into the skin with a probe, you create an electrical field in the skin. You create an electrical gradient potential. That causes the skin to change. The act of measuring changes the measurement for the future ones. Therefore, once you've done the measurements, if you go back and measure again, they will be different. That's the physiology of the human body. That's how skin works. Um, that doesn't mean the equipment is uh, inaccurate. It's highly accurate because if you take a fixed resistance, not a human being, but say a resistor, and measure it over and over and over and over again, you measure it as many times as you want, you'll be within 1%. It will never change. But humans change, and that's what you're seeing. Therefore, the first measurement you do is the valid measurement. Subsequent measurements to that, not valid. And we always teach, go with your first set of measurements. All right. Um, looking forward to the recording. Got to go to work. Thanks for the info. Can you create your own notes template? Yes, you can. You just click Add New Template. Type in whatever you want. Create the template with color, with bold, with whatever you want in the text, and then save it, and you've got your own new template in there. So whatever you do, if you have an intake form you like, type it in there and you're good to go. you got a template. It's all there for you. All right, folks, I see people beginning to start to sign off. But we've got some questions I'll answer. Debbie, can you take a picture of the Ashi and add to your note? Of course. Yeah, that's what the picture, ver picture section is for. Uh, take a picture of whatever you want, and you can drop it in your notes. You bet. Uh, Valerie said, can the patient order the herbs from Meridia if I don't carry them yet? Um, yes, they can. They would need to contact us with your information, though. Let us know that you're the practitioner because we don't typically sell straight to um, patients, but, but you could, yeah. Still single point exam capable? Yes. Natasha said, I'd prefer to add treatment recs not based, not based on channel imbalances as well. Is that possible? Uh, unfortunately, not right now. What, what drives the treatment recommendations and custom treatment is channel imbalances. Of course, you're always welcome to type into the note. Also treated this, you know, boom, done, re really easy. You can do that. And you can type that into home care instructions for your patient to do at home too. So AccuGraph never limits you that, oh, you can't treat that. It just isn't going to automatically put it in your notes for you. You'll have to actually just put that in. All right, Rodney says, after graphing, will the probes be able to locate the recommended treatment points for proper point location by locating the most electrically active point? Um, not right now, although that's something we were talking about putting back in. That was something that AccuGraph 4 was capable of doing. We didn't know that folks were using it much. Found out they were, and so that's something that has been requested, and we're looking into adding that back. Lynn asked, is there a way to include tongue and pulse in the notes? You bet, type it up. Um, we have not made a tongue or pulse template, but uh, that would be something that you could easily add as a, as a template and just click, click, you've got it there. Susan, will we be able in the future to add images to custom treatments? Um, that's a good suggestion, Susan. I like that idea. Thanks for suggesting that. Maybe so. We'll see what we can do. This is how we, this is how we grow and get better. Eris says, are you discussing detailed results each graphing, each graphing session or only main results? Trying to minimize time. Great point, Eris. Yes. First visit, spend some time. Next visit, the patient will teach you. It's incredible. The graph will come out and they will grab it and they will, or look at the computer and they'll say, oh, look at that. My liver's that better and so on. You will not have to spend a lot of time each time, uh, a minute or two. We have folks that say, I don't, I don't have time to add AccuGraph to my patient visits. It's going to take too much time. My reply would be, I have testimonials from people who said, I can see twice as many patients now with AccuGraph because I don't have to spend a lot of time talking. The graph does it for me. Once they understand it, I show them the graph. And they're like, oh, okay, yeah, I see what we're doing. All right, let's get busy. Treat me. So, yeah, um, you don't have to discuss in detail every time. Uh, Cameron put up a reminder, if you're not an AccuGraph 5 user, we can't add you into the group. We've had several requests, people trying to join the group who do not have AccuGraph 5 yet. Unfortunately, sorry, that's not available. But we look forward to having you on AccuGraph 5. Jing, do you suggest measure before and after treatment? Why? No, I don't. I suggest measure before treatment and then treat based on the measurement. I don't suggest measuring after treatment because all that you'll see is that you stirred things up. But once you treat a patient, the chi is moving. You've got to go through a whole horror cycle before things settle where they're going to go. And so 
the best thing to do is measure and then treat and then wait at least 24 hours and measure them next visit and then you'll see the results of what you did. All right, um, Ramses, what about a second measurement with a split? Everybody asks this one. You recall that the reason you do a second measurement is because the reading was too low. I'll just use my pen probe here. So if I was supposed to be measuring here, but I actually measured over here, it measured too low. And so AccuGraph flags that says, hey, you know, that's kind of suspect. That's a little low. Go measure it again. And I go back and I go, Wee! oh, and look at that. Now it reads high. I'm measuring a different point. I'm actually, I, I missed the point before. So people say, well, yeah, but you can only measure once. True, but I'm on a different point. So I am only measuring it once. So good question. Good catch. I'm glad to see people are awake out there. But we've we've done the we've done some extensive testing on the measuring and remeasuring on splits. And yeah, if you were off the point the first time, then you can validly measure and get on the point. And moving the probe around while you measure and listening to the tone will help you know you're on the point because that pitch changes. And when that pitch when you move here and the pitch goes up, now you know you're on the point. Good question. Thank you. All right. Um how accurate is the reading if remeasuring for a split? Okay, just covered that one. Dave asked, what does it cost to upgrade? Uh, Accugraph.com slash upgrade. And then type in your serial number off the back of your probe, and it will give you all of your pricing and options right there. Uh, what's better to use for treatment, needles or laser? Getting into more of a clinical question, not going to cover that much right now. Both can be effective. There's different times that you would want to use each. That's stuff that we'll talk about in some future trainings. Thank you. All right. Taking more questions by email. So please send an email if you have more questions. I guess that's my cue. We've gone an hour and 45 minutes. I'm going to be hoarse. I appreciate all of you that have stuck around, and thank you for all the great questions, everybody. I see that we still have uh, a large number of folks on. want you to know we've got the Facebook group. Hit us up there with questions. We've got excellent support if you're, if you're downloading and installing AccuGraph 5 or if you're thinking about upgrading, go check out the specials before they expire. You're going to want to get in on the discounts that are available to you. That's what I've got, folks, for today. Uh, I'm going to say thank you, everybody. We appreciate you guys. Thank you for making AccuGraph the most successful, most powerful graphing system for 13 years. We're looking forward to another 13. Signing off. We'll see you guys later.